welcome to the Self Made Book Channel. I'm Bianca. And I'm Byron. And today we are interviewing the very lovely Vanessa Vallely, who is the founder of We Are The City. Now, I've known Vanessa for a very long time. And so when we said, Vanessa, we're going to, you know, drag you out of your house and ask you, well, no, you're still in your house, but ask <laughs> you for some of your amazing time to share with our audience. She said, yes, of course, Bianca Byron will do anything for you. Something like that. Anyway. It, so it, it makes a good story. It is a good story. And you know what? Storytelling is important in business. <laughs> <laughs> so Vanessa, thank you very much. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Excellent. So as we do with all of our guests, we just first would like to ask you, what is it you do? And tell us a little bit about your journey. Okay. So I'm Vanessa Vallely. I'm founder of We Are The City. Uh, but before that, there's a long old story around kind of where I started, where I come from. So I grew up in Hackney, um, left school at 16, had big ambitions, lots of drive, lots of passion, but not really that much to back it up. Didn't do that well in school, um, but again, kind of had big dreams. So got on the bus, uh, was seeking like a big job that would pay me big money, ended up with a small job paying me small money. Um, but I kind of spent the best part of the early stages of my career always kind of punching above my weight. Um, going for jobs I wasn't necessarily qualified for, sometimes getting them, asking people for help. You know, I had nothing to lose. Anything was a bonus. So I managed to land a job in banking, uh, which I subsequently lost six months afterwards, thought the world was over, learned about resilience from a very young age. Um, but then I managed to roll through lots of other different banking jobs, kind of always putting my hand up, always doing the work that no one else wanted to do, because I figured the path less trodden is sometimes the best one. Um, ended up kind of carving out a bit of a niche in terms of my more senior roles around kind of banking transitions and, and organisations that were merging together. Hit 2008 where my skills really come into play. You know, when everyone was trying to solve problems that, you know, with no money, that was kind of where I come from, where I started. So that was a skill I already had. So jumped through a lot of different banks, done a period of permanent roles, contract roles. But about 12 years ago, I was just getting increasingly frustrated especially working in like tech and banking at the lack of women that were around me and I was kind of moaning to my husband you know we're a we're a dynamic duo too um I was saying you know where's the website for me like I work in the city 12 hours a day where's my feed of inspiration um mm. and there was nothing out there I mean bear in mind 12 years ago gender wasn't on anyone's agenda diversity wasn't even a term then so to fill what my idea was to fill a website for, for, full of resources for women that could kind of drive their own careers. I think I had about four items on the page. That was it. And it was built in some really ropey old kind of um, web builder program. I can't even remember what it was called, but you know, by the time you'd updated it, like everything was out of date, you know, you take <laughs> three days to do a newsletter. Um, so we built this website, say my husband kind of pushed me to do it and it was a hobby. It was a not-for-profit, something I run off the side of my desk. But for kind of as time went on, we was collecting a community and all we ever did was give them. We never had anything to sell them, no commercial products, but we built up a very trusted kind of community. So around about seven years ago, we had a database of around 40,000 women. And if I'm completely honest, I stopped skipping into the bank. And every time I'd done anything to do with gender or diversity or the progression of women, I just felt that fire in my belly. So I made a big decision. I hung up the big corporate boots. Um, I'd written Heels of Steel by now. I'd written my first book telling the story of that 16-year-old girl. But most importantly, you know, I kind of followed a dream and, and it, was, it was a little bit scary. So I had to build out a set of commercial products that I thought could help companies attract, retain, develop female talent. And they've grown off over the last six years. I, you know, I can't say it's been easy, but it's been fun and I've learned a hell of a lot. <laughs> That's who I am. A bit of an author, a bit of a public speaker, run we are the city, run we are tech women. Two kids, two dogs, locked <laughs> in my house. <laughs> so how are you coping with the wonderful C word at the moment uh, during lockdown? It's been interesting, you know, because I think, again, it goes back to, um, and it's something I was reading that Bianca made a comment on. I think because of my background, it's, it's always been that kind of fight or flight with me. Hmm. So my initial reaction to this was, I've got to survive. Yeah. And I've got to use whatever I've got to make that survival. You know, I have a small team of five people, their salaries pay their mortgages, you know, they're not, they haven't got their kids in private schools or anything like that. You know, this is about how do we survive as a company? How am I not going to lose everything I've built for the last 12 years? Where can I innovate? So I think for me, it was as much as it's 
it's a, it's a very sad time when you look at kind of what's going on and a lot of businesses will lose their way and things are not coming through quick enough for businesses and stuff like that. There is one part of me that said, I'm on a project, right? And this is a short six month project and I've got to give it my absolute all. And that involves, you know, having those ideas at three in the morning, emailing people on the basis they might just say yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just going back to, I feel like I've gone back to when I first started where I was running a, my day job, my corporate career, and then I was working as an entrepreneur. You know, I often see things that you two comment on where you've got your laptops on, kind of in bed on a Sunday and stuff. And I'm like, I so relate because <laughs> I've spent 12 years like that. And it's only this year that I could kind of let go a little bit and just let my team run with things. Now, all of a sudden, and I was saying this to someone yesterday, my sleeves are up and I'm back in the weeds. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what it's going to take for us to kind of ride this wave. I will not go down with this ship. Yes. I love, yeah. it. Ah, I and, love and it, it. And it, you know what? We don't hear that enough, I think, yeah. from entrepreneurs. I think there's a lot in the news about the negative side of this, which is obviously impacting many of us entrepreneurs yeah. and business owners, but not enough about that pivot, about that innovation, about that drive. So can you tell us a little bit about how you've pivoted the business? So we are the city, but I mean, basically, in short, we're an events company, right? So we run a series of awards. There's a lot of heart in what we do. There always was long before we was a commercial organisation. So we run two sets of awards. You know, my plan is to highlight those amazing women that are kind of sometimes hidden in the corner. They're not quite at senior levels. They're doing all the work. They're not getting all the credit. So both of our awards, we are the city. Tech women focus on that. We do two conferences and like, for example, for the tech conference, um, I don't want to talk to women about the lack of women at the top. We, we can wax lyrical about that. What's the point? We're part of that problem. I want to teach them skills. I want to inspire them. I want to motivate them, give them some of that passion. So our conferences are very much about skills, not stats. Mm. So we're very good at bringing people together. Um, so we run like gender networks, which is all the network heads of around 95 different firms to share best practice and collaborate. So that kind of collaboration thing is a fundamental part of who we've been for 12 years, you know, so kind of opening up our doors, helping us where we can. So if you think about what we would have had on the track kind of for this year, we would have had various conferences that we were doing. We would have had various awards. We would have had our quarterly events, our careers clubs that we run all require people <laughs> so the revenue stream for them requires sponsorship and it requires people to be to buy tickets so basically that revenue stream just disappeared overnight yes. so how do you do that what do you cope with you still got the skills you still got the fundamental parts of, of, of what we were trying to do but how do we do that in a different way so for me the natural thing would be to virtualize so mm -hmm. Even I think it was, I was, on, I was on a roll, International Women's Day, beginning of March. I'd done about seven talks that week. I had about 15 planned for the rest of March and it literally just went like that. It just cut out. Yeah. So I was like, right, I've got this time. Let's look at our schedule, look at what we can push out. Some of the stuff we pushed into Q4. Knowing Q4 is going to be massively busy for everyone. I think everyone, if, it's crazy. If can, I'm getting on a plane. I'm going out. <laughs> Right, so you know, so, yeah, we're all on the plane. Um, so there was a, there was a little bit of that, but I'm just thinking all my kind of competitors are going to be moving into Q4, so we're going to get squashed. So um, so I said to my team, look, what's the biggest thing that we do? And the biggest thing that we do is rising stars. Well, that's already underway. We announced those winners on Monday, and you need physical people there. They want to pick up that award. They want that <laughs> feeling. So there's not much we can do other than push that out and hope we're out of this by then. Yeah. But the conference side, why couldn't we virtualize We Are Tech Women? So if we were going to do it, we'd need a little bit of investment because I want to do it on a platform that is state of the art. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to risk bad connectivity. And also, if I'm going after the sorts of corporate sponsors I'm going after, I've got to give them the reassurance that I'm going to put you on a platform that is going to be in line with your expectation, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can deliver the best service ever. So we chose a platform that was based in the U.S., it gives you um, multiple stages to run multiple content. So for us, it was a no-brainer. If we'd have done the conference in London in November, we'd have had a maximum of 600 people. I don't ever like to make our events too big because I think they lose their personality. I probably could have fitted 20 content sessions. Virtualizing enables me to have 1,500 people. Mm. I've tripled my content. I can have four stages. We're now running, I think, 65 different sessions. That's Having awesome. more capacity means I can give more tickets away to women who are out of work and men who are out, are out of work that have lost their jobs with COVID. So that giving back that's true to our heart, I can do more of that. 
I never would have got the speakers that I've gone after with this conference in the room in a physical sense because their diaries would have been too busy. Mm -hmm. Now they're sitting at home, they can come and give me their expertise. So it ticked all the boxes. The thing was going out and kind of making people change their mindset about virtual learning. And, and I think we were kind of forced into it because now everything's by Webex or everything's on webinars, you know. So people are kind of getting used to it. But to actually sit there and learn this way, it, it involves a shift of mindset. Yeah. So you have to do a bit of that with your marketing, you know, yeah. because it's not, as I say, it's not what they're used to. People are used to pitching up. And the biggest part of what we do is connecting people and helping them to build their network. So how do you kind of do that virtually? So that's the kind of piece that we're kind of working out because previous conferences, we use these wonderful badges where people just tap with each other and it emails you and it emails me and everyone loves it. Sponsors would have one on their station. They would be able to collect details of people that were interested. So how do we still do that? And this virtual platform enables them to collect kind of data, obviously with GDPR, but it's the physical networking piece that we're going to be missing. But I think you were kind of used to the, the isolation part with that. So that was the biggest thing that we kind of pivoted overnight going to virtual. It's involved my team learning a new tool. Mm -hmm. It's involved me working with my sponsors to paint the picture that I see of how this can be. Now, all of them are like, this is really timely. We're really excited. We've never used this platform before. So it's a slower decision-making process and they're all on the journey with me. You know, it's all that time where I'm saying to them, do you remember that recruitment video that you, that you recorded and no one ever watched? Now's the time. I can have it. I can repurpose it, I can yeah. put it on the platform. So yeah. it's a different conversation with them. But yeah. as I was saying to someone earlier on, you know, this isn't a case of great. This is a great money making scheme that we've come up with. This is about survival. This mm -hmm. will carry us hopefully to the point where we can get back to normal and start to do what we do. So for, for us, it was a case of this is it's, it's exciting because it's a project and also it's keeping my team engaged. They're learning something new. We can give back as a consequence. So there's a lot of kind of box ticking that it's doing for me. And who knows, this could become a product for us. In future oh, okay. yeah, because you yeah. said you know going back to normal but actually what is normal is, is, it, yeah, this is this going to be the new normal, normal for you but, do you know what i think this throws up lots of different inter interesting things you know around i mean one of the panels we've got on the conference is around um you know flexible working so what happens now do we all go back to that mad world of presenteeism and stuff like that do we all need to be in the room or do we get the life balance that we all crave so i think you know we will see some changes and i really hope that we don't go back to that mad existence, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just think that there will be positives that must come out of such a, a, a what is a very challenging, very challenging. Situation, yeah. situation. Yeah, it is. I mean, for us as well, we're building this new tool, this new technology, and we're doing it virtually, which adds another layer of complexity, you know, on top of what you're trying to do. If we was in the office, this would be a very agile, dynamic, let's do this, let's throw that out there, this newsletter, that marketing you know, plan. We're doing this all online. Do you know what I mean? My, my staff are at home, they've got their kids at home, so they're working hours. You know, when this all happened, I sent them all home immediately. And I just, and they was, a couple of them were saying like, you know, we're not gonna be, what happens like if we've got the kids? And I'm like, look, we just all work different hours. Sort yeah. the kids out, you know, and do that, do that first. And then if you're on at eight or nine at night, but we've always kind of been like that. We've always worked very flexibly. You get the work done. Anyway, yeah. Do you know what? I trust my staff. Yeah. I trust them. They've been with me a long time, you know, and I'm very much, I trust until proven otherwise anyway. Mm -hmm. So they work, they work so hard and they're all bought into this idea of what we're kind of doing, which is kind of what, what we need. So yeah, it's, um, as I say, I hate to put the word excitement in with what's going on at the moment, but for us as a business, you know, I'm thinking, I kind of was thinking the other morning, one day I'll sit on a stage and I'll tell this story. Yeah. In, in part of, you know, this is kind of how we survived it or didn't, you know, yeah. I'm we do. But, you know, I say, you've, you've got to give it your best shot, haven't you? What, what more can you it's do? It's interesting because that story could be actually massive. It could be the story of how the business changed tenfold as a result of your ability to adapt, to innovate, to pivot. And suddenly now you're this tech event brand, <laughs> you're an online events brand, who's now the global event, global delivery based on technology. And, and that is a thing. 
Oh, no. I mean, for us to say it's a massive learning curve, but as I was saying yesterday to my husband, what we're building is lots of assets to be able to do this again. Um, you know, it's, it's very interesting. A couple of um, individuals that bought tickets to the conference are actually my competitors. And I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> they want to see what you're doing, right? <laughs> That's thing, right? Did I you let them or did you kind oh, of yes. you sent one of them an email and said, I hope you enjoy your day with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've got to acknowledge them. You have to let them know I've seen this. <laughs> But, Do you know what? I think there's space enough for everyone, right? These, yeah. uh, some of these companies are much, much, much bigger than me. I see it as a form of flattery, right? So it's fine, you know, and I've got no doubt people will, if it is successful, someone else will come and do it. That's business, right? Which is why you have to continue to innovate everything that you do. I mean, it wasn't necessarily just this that we pivoted. It was all of our events. So one of the first things that we did when all this started is we've got quite a big network. There's a lot of people we've helped out in the past and we very rarely ask for anything by way of return or if we do it's for someone else you know so um so we said what we do is we do a suite of free webinars so originally we went to our corporate clients you know the ones that kind of work with work with us for years and we said look we're going to do these webinars for you you can give them to your staff they're free and they will help keep your staff engaged while we're all kind of off and self-isolating and, and and i said but i'd kind of like to do them for everyone you know and they were like absolutely cool open them up to everyone and we did so there's now 45, it's under the brand of We Are Virtual. So we spun up a new brand um, under the We Are kind of thing, which I wish I'd trademarked all those years yeah. ago. Everyone's We Are now, right? So, um, it's so not the it's not we are, it's <laughs> thing. So we had We Are Virtual, we spun up these 45 webinars, but that, we couldn't have done that without our network mm. and without all of these speakers that have spoke to us before. Literally, I put something on LinkedIn on the Sunday and I said, I'm thinking of doing these webinars. Can anyone help me pay it forward and give their time? And by the Monday, my inbox was like that, you know, mm -hmm. of people giving their time. And when you think about it, it's these people that will be most affected by this. They don't have day jobs. Mm -hmm. They don't have regular incomes, but they were willing to help others. And I think that speaks volumes for those individuals. So we've laid on these webinars. I think we've had about 3,000 people sign up. Amazing. Now. Uh, we had so many. We're now running three a week. But they're free, right? So, and also we're getting people from all over the globe. We're recording them. So, and then what we're probably going to do is some of those recordings is turn them into a podcast. So podcast was on our list this year to do one for We Are The City and one for tech. Now we've got the, we've got the data, you know, with their permission to turn that into a podcast. So, you know, when the, when the money comes in a little bit, then I can do that. And then what do you know? We've got a podcast with 45 different episodes on it. That's that's come out. So this is what I'm saying. There has been... There's been some things I would not have done. Like someone would have said to me this year, without what's gone on, do a virtual conference. I wouldn't have touched it with a barge pole. No, no chance. You know, no, no. If someone would have said, you know, do a podcast this year, I'd be like, mm, where am I going to fit that in? Yeah. So two new things have come off the back of this. Mm. You know, again, will they work? I don't know. I really hope so. But well, I'll, that's I'll, that's I'll go down trying, as I said yeah. earlier on, you know. So, go ahead. I was going to say that's the beauty of being able to repurpose content because I think people forget that you know you've recorded something why can't you use it for something else why can't you use it to get yeah. it out to the masses more widely and again it's about that innovation sorry go on yeah. yeah so some of the I want to know what some of the workshop topics are Oh God, there's all sorts of things. I mean, originally we focused on kind of working from home mm -hmm. and like how to overcome that resilience, mm -hmm. you know, how to cope in times of stress and pressure. So we very much focused a lot of it around the emotions that people would be feeling at the moment. How do I balance it all? You know, how do I, you know, people losing sleep, for example. So we've got a session coming up on kind of managing your insomnia because who don't, who don't lay awake at night thinking of things? I mean, I know in the absolute transparency, I wake up three in the morning and the wheels start going and that's it. It's five o'clock and I've either sold world peace or I'm in a worse place from where, <laughs> where I've woken up, you know? So entrepreneurship, right? <laughs> we, what entrepreneur doesn't? But we've kind of focused it. We looked at the emotional side first and then we brought in some skills because I think why people are off, we never have time to personally develop ourselves. I know even I get sent books to read, all sorts of things, links to watch and never get the time to do it. Now people have bandwidth. They have a bit of time. So if we come out of this in three months time or whenever it will be, not having learned something new, not having tried something new, taken a risk maybe if you can, then, it, then, then nothing good has come out this time. I said to my husband, we'll never get this time back. You know, I look at 
And again, I'm talking about family now. I look at this time with my kids. I'm never going to get three months at home with them. Never. Mm. They're growing up now. They're going to be gone soon, fleeing the nest, doing their own thing. (laughs) I'm never going to, don't get me wrong, they're driving me nuts, but um, (laughs) I'm never going to have this time back. So there are blessings. And I think you have to be grateful for those blessings. So interesting you say that because um, Byron put something up on his Instagram saying, you know, if you don't, in this time, if you don't learn something new or try something new, yeah. it's time you lacked, it was discipline. And people yeah. got really angry. <laughs> oh, triggered. They got triggered them. Oh my God. <laughs> really angry. And I think people just misunderstand and misinterpret what he's saying. The sentiment of it is, this is an opportunity you're never going to get again to be at home for three months. Okay, I, don't so think, I mean, it's not so much, you know, go, go on this mad self-development program. Yeah. yeah. I think it's more a case of doing things that you wouldn't normally do. So for, take my example, I don't get chance to read books and I used to love to read. So if I get half an hour now, I don't have as many things to do as I did in the past. I'm not getting on the train. You know, I'm not running in between this meeting and that meeting. I can open my book and I can read it. So if I come out of this and I've read one book, that's better than where I was three months ago. So that's kind of, you know, the way that I'm seeing it again, you know, it's hard at the moment. It's, it's, uh, for, from us as a family, I've got my kids at home, but we've got very elderly parents. So I'm kind of doing the food runs and the food shops and, and stuff like that. So you still, there are other things you have to fit in, mm-hmm. perhaps in that time that are super, super important. But I just think that constant kind of pushing yourself forward to do something new or, yeah. or stuff like that, it also just takes your mind off of actually what's going on. Sure. You know, so. So I have a question for you, not necessarily related to this yeah. coronavirus situation. Okay. Instead, related to your wonderful husband. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? So, so, him. <laughs> so Brian and I always get asked about our relationship, how we make it work, what it's like to be both entrepreneurial or to yeah. an entrepreneur starting something. So I want to understand from your perspective, some of your top tips, I guess, on managing a relationship as, as entrepreneurs, as enterprising people? So, I mean, it was Stuart that pushed me to set up the other city. He was the one that said, go and do it. I don't think he would realise how big that would become and that that would become a fundamental part of our life. I didn't even think it would ever be a commercial business. It was always kind of a hobby. I think, you know, A, you know the advice, right? Choose your partner well, right? And the reason you're buying oh, partner, <laughs> yeah. And the reason Stuart and I are together is because we have, equal passion for things you know he supports me and I support him there are moments don't get me wrong he and I actually find it quite hard to work together if I'm being completely honest we have massive creative differences you know he has got a skill set that I don't have like he's very creative he can create images he builds the websites and stuff like that he'll put an image on and I'll look at it and I've got eyes like a spirit level anyway I can see if something's a millimeter off you know and I'm like that's one kid he's like no it's not you know, gets very protective of his work, you know. So there are very creative, um, what's the word I would use? Not arguments, debates um, yeah. about things. But that's all part of part of the parcel. In the end of that debate, we come up with something better because we've both had a chance to kind of, you know, have our point and have our say. So I think, you know, bear in mind, Stuart's not always been an, a fundamental part of the business. He goes to work because we couldn't both, we couldn't afford to live if it was just kind of we are the city so he goes out to work he has his corporate jobs he does his contracts but he's always there doing kind of stuff in the background so at the moment he's off work so his contract finished we haven't renewed it he's going to be off as well for a couple of months so he's helping us with a conference and having that skill set is invaluable but he's kind of dipped in and out of the business but I would say in terms of top tips is appreciate each other's differences play to each other's strengths absolutely and it's all right to have a really big Barney as long as you <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> so if you have a, a, a Barney about the business, how yeah. do you draw the line between the business relationship and partnership and the romantic relationship and partnership? It's hard, right? Because again, especially, uh, so I'm in a slightly different situation to you two because not only have you got things that connect you in terms of your relationship. So you've got kids, which tend to be most of your conversation. At the moment, it's our parents. That becomes a big fundamental conversation. Then you've got work. So there's lots of different things you have to disconnect yourself to get back to who you two are as an individual. For Stuart and I, there are so many different component parts that we could have a Barney about over differences of opinion or whatever. 
but ultimately we come together off the back of the kids, our care for parents and our passion for what we've created. So I think sometimes you just got to say, and it's sometimes we sit there and we talk about work and our, both our kids roll their eyes. They hate it, right? <laughs> Ella calls We Are The City the brother she never wanted. Why is she <laughs> a man when it's a woman's website? I don't know. But she kind of, you know, she says, you know, oh God, she's talking about work. And I'm like, but we have to because we're in it together and even more so at the moment. So we kind of make a conscientious effort not to get into lengthy work debates yeah. in front of the kids. You yeah. know, and it's been quite, because we go out for our daily exercise and we walk our dogs. And that's when we tend to talk about work. What have we achieved today? What is it that we want to do tomorrow? So we kind of have our team debrief then. And then we come home, we talk about other things. Because otherwise it can become just one big circle yeah. of work discussions and you lose yourselves as a married couple. So you can't allow that to happen. So we've got some, got some quick fire questions for you. I'm gonna Ooh, try and love different. quick fire. All right. So this is just whatever you're thinking, we want to know without too much thought about it. That's dangerous, right? Byron, because I'll tell it how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with something easy. Favorite. All right. What, what? Your, what's your favourite book? Uh, my favourite book? Mine. It was a still. Good answer. <laughs> still a sparkling in water. So it actually it's not. It's Caroline Crado's Perez's at the moment, Invisible Women. It's all about data and how women are left out. Um, the kind of, you know, when they make things like bulletproof vests and defibrillators and stuff like that. Fantastic book. Still or sparkling water? Oh, sparkling. Eating or takeaway? Mm, husband's a really good cook. <laughs> Get it in the house. Why pay for it? <laughs> favorite book. Uh, favorite movie. Sorry. Favorite movie. Wizard of Oz. A day out with the kids or the husband. <gasps> oh. <Ooh>. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to go with the kids, right? Because again, they're getting older. They're going to soon leave me. Do you know what I mean? It would have to be a day out for kids. And it's funny, actually, I often twist their arm. I'll come with me, take the dog for a walk. And when they were little, they would have loved to have gone over the woods and found conkers and stuff. We'd have come back, made a picture. Now it's like, oh, no, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it when I spend time with them. <laughs> what is your pet peeve? Oh, pet peeve. People that don't say thank you. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, I'll give you one more. This one is not so much, but what's the hardest decision you've ever had to make? Um, hardest decision. I used to think it was leaving my corporate job, believe it or not. Um, I think that was because it's all I ever wanted. Do you know what I mean? From the age of 16 and to walk away from finally what I'd got, everything that I wanted. I had the big job title, I had, you know, all the trimmings that come with it. And I think, I think it was hard because I was scared more than anything else. Um, I've made lots of hard decisions in my life to walk away from negative people. I would say sometimes that, that hurts you as a consequence of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, lots of hard decisions, but you look back and you think everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, the universe has a habit of putting things right. Eventually I kind yeah. of live by that mantra. And I just want to pick up on that because I feel that sometimes walking away from negative people are the people that are closest to you. Right? Yeah which makes it the, even more harder to say, no, that's not, I'm not accepting that in my life. Yeah, I think when you get older as well, I mean, I'm, you know, I often laugh with my mum because she's got no filter at all. She just tells, just says. Mom, I think no, mum in general, when you get to a certain age, that's it. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. She does, she just, she just says it how it is. And she said, and she used to always say to me, Vanessa, when you get older, your filter will become less and less and less. And you won't tolerate rubbish and you're, be more inclined to just even eliminate those people out of your life or tell them what you think. And I never thought I would kind of get like that, but it is as I'm getting older, I don't have time for it. Mm. We have limited time on this planet and we need to kind of use it and use it well. I'd like to think when my time is up, I've done some good in the world, you know, and that I've give my kids the, the best thing I could ever give them, which is their education, you know, their appreciation of difference. And I'll throw the third one in, good teeth. I have good teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had really bad teeth as a kid, so it was kind of like one of my things, you know, I had gaps mm. everywhere and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, mummy's going to fix your teeth. <laughs> 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 good old NHS. <laughs> right. 
Do you have any two questions for us or one question before we start wrapping up? Well, I, th I think you two are amazing. I think you're like power couple, right? I love kind of watching you work. I love you watching you innovate. I love watching you help other people. I love what you're doing with the mentoring. And this was not planned for me to say all this, but I do, I admire you both greatly. Um, and I just, I, I kind of, I'm intrigued as to where it goes, you know, this global brand that you've both got. Where are you going to take it? Where does it go next? Because, you know, you're obviously building, and, and again, you're a few generations younger than me. So it's really interesting to watch and see how your perspectives will change over time as well and where your focus is. So, yeah, I'm just happy to be part of the kind of Byron and Bianca party. Ah, yeah, yeah, Bianca yeah. and Byron party there. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble? We'll go a Bianca and Byron party after this uh, yes, we will. situation. <laughs> yes, sir, we were saying the same thing. It's like, you know what, come August, which is because Ella was saying this morning, Mum, it's their birthdays in August. You know, we might be shut indoors. And I'm like, well, if we are, we'll just make cakes. But if we're not, we're having the mother of all parties. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's like that right now. Yeah. Well, but you've got to be grateful. Every day you wake up and you breathe. And if you've got food in your fridge, you know, you just, you've got to be grateful for the small things in life. You know, I think that goes for every single one of us. And just, you know, hope this is over as soon as possible. And just feeling for people that have been affected by it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. It's for having me. Always a pleasure speaking yeah. to you. You're all right in my day. Right, <laughs> and bubbly. Even when things are not going right, you're like on it. Energy yeah. all day long. And I love yeah. it. But where can people find you? How can people reach you? How can they um, join? you listen to your events um i would say go on to we are the city there's loads of kind of virtual events that are running at the moment uh, we recommend other people's podcasts as well we need to make sure we got this one on there um but there are loads of people spinning up things for people to kind of look at be inspired by again it's a tough time for all of us so go on to we are the city um you can find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me on Instagram. There's two accounts there, I think. Um, go for the OBE one. What's, what's the Instagram account? Sorry? What's the Instagram account? So they uh, know? That's Valerie OBE. Um, that one. I, the other one, I just post pictures of food and dogs. <laughs> my kids. Um, yeah but I mean obviously I say we're a central point for what everyone's doing to kind of you know progress women in their careers and whether they're corporate or entrepreneurs so hopefully we can help someone excellent love it thank you thank so much thank you so much Vanessa it's been thank absolutely having me. thank you to everyone for tuning in this has been another fantastic opportunity to learn from someone who is doing amazing things so thank you make sure you like comment subscribe and share 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 sharing is free share it to someone who you know <laughs> will enjoy it and will find some real great inspiration from it so thank you very much everyone